Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Grace Kombe. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe down below. And as a title, we today we're going to be talking about finances and financial literacy. So I'm going to give my two cents around finances in the hopes that we can all have better financial futures and be financially free in the future or for now, right? So I'm going to start with um, defining financial literacy. So what is financial literacy? I know sometimes we hear the term being thrown around, but we may not really understand what it means. So basically, financial literacy is just the ability to understand and effectively use various forms of um, financial skills, which is from your budgeting, your investing, and your saving. Just so effectively, under, like understanding and then putting into effective use different financial skills, right? So that's what financial literacy means. So financial literacy is important because it helps us to plan ahead and to be prepared in terms of like in case we have an emergency in the future or just to have a financially free future and to be debt free, right? So I'm going to talk about um, different aspects of financial literacy from budgeting to saving to kind of like our Zambian cultural context and finances and just um, things we can put in place for like to start putting ourselves in a place of being financially free in the future. Right. So to start with budgeting, on budgeting, there's what's known as the 50, 30, 20 rule. So this is basically where, say, if my salary is 1000 kwacha, right, I divide it into 50, 30, 20 um, percent. So 50 percent goes towards my essential needs. So this is where I get my rent out of if I rent a house. This is where I get my food stuff money out of, like my grocery money. This is where I pay for my electricity, my water bills, and just everything that I essentially need to for life and for, for living, basically. So that's my needs. That's my 50%. So I'm getting, if I'm getting 1,000 kwacha, sorry, that's 500 kwacha. Then 30 is your wants, right? So this is the money where you get things that you wanted, say, um, I want to save for a holiday, that's where it comes from, from that 30%. If I want to buy a new couch or a new TV, that's where that comes from. If I want to get some new um, jeans or a new pair of shoes, that comes from the 30%. So if I'm getting 1,000 kwacha, that's 300 kwacha of that goes towards my wants. And then 20% is your savings. So savings is basically um, money that is for emergencies. So that's where you get your emergency fund from, right? And um, also, so that's your 20% emergency fund and basically even just like saving to later invest which i'll get into or saving for your retirement basically so 20 percent if you're getting 1000 kwacha that would be 200 kwacha that you put aside and you don't touch that's money that you're supposed to keep in terms of like emergencies or to invest into something or um for your retirement so the savings should be kept aside whatever amount of money you get put that 20 percent aside as your savings right so from that from savings, we're now going to investments, right? So we don't just get that money that we've saved, the 20%, and just say, um, I'm going to invest this money. So basically, investing your money is putting your money into something with the hope that it will multiply, whereby saving your money is just putting it aside, maybe in a savings account in the bank, and it doesn't grow. So savings and investments differ in that savings, it's just putting your money aside and it doesn't grow. And then investing is growing your money, putting your money into something with the hope that it will multiply or the money will grow basically, right? So when you do put this 20% um, aside, you have to research a very good, say, a very good business idea or a very good investment plan. So don't feel pressure to just put your money into something quickly because I know sometimes we have money and we just want to let it go and put it into something because we're scared that we'll waste it. If that is our fear, maybe put it in a like safe savings account in the bank or let someone who you trust hold on to it while you um, research good investment ideas, right? So don't just because my neighbor is doing chickens, then you're also going to chickens because in Kokoshlesha, because this, no, because once I share mongo rice, I also go into mongo rice. No, research your business idea, not only locally, but also like not only in your little town, but also like in, um, in the Zambian context, like say, for example, how we recently had a shortage of onions, for example. Was it onions? Yeah. Okay, as an example, if I had a shortage of, shortage of onions, then maybe I decide it's good for me to go into onion farming because onions are not um, found on the market these days as easily as they were. And then I even start farming onions based on this little information and I buy a farm, I start growing onions on a large scale, and then now my onions are ready to, um, to sell on the market. And then all of a sudden I didn't do my research on a national level and I found that to find that Zambia had maybe imported, imported lots of onions from South Africa, for example. So now I've invested all this money and then 
all my onions are about to go to waste and I'm about to make a huge loss because my onions are going to go for a very low price because we've got all these onions coming in from South Africa that the government or, um, had ordered from South Africa, for example. So that's an example of making a business decision that you didn't research properly. Is why I'm saying it's very important because you've been putting this money aside for such a long time, you don't want it to go to waste or to make a loss out of it. So make sure you do thorough research. If you're trying to invest into a certain industry or business, talk to business giants in that industry. Don't be afraid to approach people, ask them, how does this business work? If it's growing onions, which is the example I gave earlier, ask them, okay, what goes into this? What fertilizers go into this? What are the challenges you face with this? Um, how's it been for you so far? How long did it take for you to start making profits? And yeah, just ask them what their journey has been and what goes into it so that if you decide to invest into that business, you know that you're making an informed decision after doing um, widespread research. So before you invest into something, make sure you do thorough research into that thing, right? So that's on investments. And then now jumping into um, Zambian cultural context and uh, money. So most of the time if you are working and you've got um, a family, an extended family, of course it's expected of us to give money to our families and to provide support financially to our families because in Africa and in Zambia we're brought up in um, communities. So we're expected to give back because maybe you were brought up by an auntie or you were being brought up in your home you might have lived with aunties and uncles or other people so you could be expected to support their children or just to send back money to your parents or grandparents just as a token of appreciation, right? So that's great. I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. That's, that's great and I definitely encourage it. But what I'm saying is when it comes to giving money to family members or supporting certain extended family, we also have to be wise in how we do that. First of all, don't take it out of your 20. So the 20% that I spoke about earlier, the savings, that one should not be touched. That one is for emergencies, for investments, and for your retirement and for the future. Because if you look at um, where you are now, say if you weren't paid your month end salary now if you're working, or if your business ventures didn't give you back money for this month, and if that affects you a lot, just one month not getting paid and you get affected drastically, consider you retire and then you live for 20 years after your retirement. What are you going to survive on if you're affected by just one month of no pay, right? is why it's very, very, very important that we start considering our retirement and we start saving and investing now to prepare for our retirement. So this is why I'm saying we shouldn't now spend on needs and wants and then now we have the 20% left and because we've bought a new TV, we feel like I need to give money to my family because I've spent all this money on myself. No, the 20% shouldn't be touched. So when it comes to giving money to family, rather give from your 30, which is your wants. So in your wants, if you give that money, you're not going to die. It's not like you're giving out of your needs where you give money out of your needs and then you don't have maybe water at home or electricity. That will affect you a lot. But to give out of your wants, you'll be okay without a new pair of shoes for an extra month or you'll be okay without a new TV for an extra month or a few months. So give out of your wants. And then when you do give, if it's someone in the family who maybe it's a, a guy or a girl who's graduated recently and they're not doing anything and they ask you for money, Rather give the money and say, okay, I'm giving you this money so that you can, if it's a guy, maybe he's a young guy, invest in a driver's license while you're looking for a job and then get a license and then find a job as a truck driver or an RD operator if you work in the mining industry. These are references for the mining industry where um, we work. So yeah, give them money to empower is basically what I'm saying. So give money to empower them. If it's a young lady, maybe she's done with school, she's kind of looking for a job and she says maybe she needs support with money or whatever, give her some money and say, okay, maybe take yourself for a tailoring course, for example. Um, do a tailoring course and then after that, get a job in a tailoring company or something like that. And then she starts to make a bit extra money for herself to survive on herself. And once you do that, you empower that person, meaning they won't come back to ask you for money, right? So you empower them. And when they start working, they'll remember that example and they too will be able to empower other people after that. So let's give for those that are able-bodied and young, let's give to empower. For our parents and our um, older relatives, of course, we give money because we love them and out of just our care for them. But if we've got younger people who are able-bodied, let's encourage people to um, um, get empowered so that we start passing on generational wealth instead of always having to keep people's children in later generations. Let's get into the habit of passing in generational wealth by our money habits, right? So basically, that was just my two cents on um, finances. I hope you've learned something. If you have any questions, please ask down below in the questions. And yeah, 
See you in the next one. So please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. Bye.